I don't know how it works. I, I, this impulse that kicks in when you read about uh, child sex abuse, that for most of us who have never held managerial positions or positions of power, your, your urge to seek justice, shine the light into the darkest corners, is, is, is insuperable, right? It's huge. And yet if you are in charge... If you are in control, whether it's a school or whether it's the entire Church of England or whether it's, uh, I don't know, a scout group or a, um, a, a swimming troop, the, 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 the urge to keep a lid on it seems to kick in even harder. We're going to talk about this today. It may not be easy, uh, but I'm giving you a warning up front about the direction in which we are going. Um, the Archbishop of Canterbury is i like this head well likes not quite the right word so the the idea that he is paying the price for years of silence over the child the latest child abuse scandal is a, a, a helpful headline if you're not across the facts just just give me a moment if you would and and i think this is important i, I know the church of england is not the force it was but it remains a crucial pillar of our society, or if you prefer a slightly more nuanced word, it remains a crucial pillar of our establishment. There is no suggestion whatsoever that Justin Welby himself has behaved in um, uh, criminal or, 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 or immoral. Well, immoral is a tough one, isn't it? Fashion. But he stands accused of having failed to act when made aware of disgusting behaviour by... A member of the church. It is, make no mistake, the, uh, the the story of the church's most prolific child abuser, and a story of how he was never brought to justice. Okay. So, an independent report has found that in 2013, uh, I think shortly after getting the job, the Bishop of Ely's safeguarding advisor told him in detail about the decades of abuse visited upon boys by a lawyer called John Smythe, the, um, a, a, an evangelical Christian camp leader. So you'd have summer camps and boys would go away and that is where this man would prey upon them. And in 2013, shortly after getting the job, he Welby was told by the Bishop of Ely Safeguarding Advisor what Smythe had been up to. Reviewers um, of the Making Report, which is what the independent report is called, have used the word unlikely to describe the Archbishop's insistence that he had, quotes, no awareness or suspicion of the abuse prior to 2013. Uh, the, the, the report itself concludes on the balance of probabilities it is the opinion of the reviewers of the report that it was unlikely that Justin Welby would have had no knowledge of the concerns regarding John Smythe in the 1980s in the UK now I were I a, a, a lawyer which I am categorically not I would point out that the Insistence that you had no awareness or suspicion of abuse is not the same as the claim that you had no knowledge of concerns, but it's close enough. Uh, semantics matter in these moments, oddly, because you can apologise without apologising. How many times have we examined the rhetoric of people who say, I'm sorry, but, or I'm sorry, if? It's not really an apology if you're only sorry, but, or sorry, if. I'm sorry if I've caused offence. I'm not sorry for causing a, 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 a offence. And it, 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 with the very real possibility that this story might develop while we're live on air, uh, in, in, other t in other words, it may well be that Lambeth Palace make an announcement in the coming hours or, or in the coming minutes. Um, and, and so I don't feel qualified fully qualified to comment or to invite you to comment on whether he should stay or whether he should go. I, I think he should probably go, but I don't know the contents of his soul, to use a, a religious uh, term, and therefore I don't know whether there is much clear blue water between claiming no knowledge or no suspicion of abuse and no knowledge of concerns. They're not the same thing. But here, here is... The point. Brian puts it very well. Brian puts it very well indeed. 
Um, Welby is another victim of yet another institution that puts reputational damage limitation over the moral imperative. Another example, um, uh, 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 like the Met, like the Metropolitan Police being shown up as bereft of the ability to challenge establishment institutions. Um, I d- that's not fair on this occasion. The Met might fit the description that you describe in, in, other, in other areas, but the accusation being levelled at Welby is that he didn't refer it to the police, and if he had done, then he would have been brought to justice. He died um, uh, uh, overseas before justice had been done, or even had been seen to be done. This man, John Smythe, or John Smith, it's spelt with a Y. A couple, uh, one, of, one of you telling me to pronounce it as Smith, but I've heard everyone else pronouncing it as Smythe all morning. Um, I have some horrible insights into this, into this notion of institutional... What is it we're going to call it? Um, self, self-protection? I've got one relatively trivial example, and I've got two or three horribly pertinent and relevant examples. You, you may not know this, but I attended a religious school where a number of monks were engaged in the sexual abuse of my peers. Not my close friends, um, and, and not necessarily a complete generational crossover but certainly some of the monks who had done that were still active in the community while I attended the school and it continued long after I left let me give you a little example this was the catholic church they would move a pedophile monk to a parish so they would remove him from the orbit of little boys like me whose parents were paying large sums of money to send us to the school and transplant them to a parish where he would be free potentially to pray, for example, upon altar servers or upon boys that came into his orbit from slightly different backgrounds. I I think there was a huge amount of snobbery involved in that. But that's not particularly pertinent to this case. What is pertinent to this case is is an experience I had at my my previous school, at my my prep school, where, again, there were two active paedophiles and this is the bit, right? And, and, and I'm going to warn you in advance, or at least I'm going to crave your indulgence in advance. Because I still get quite, as you'd, as you'd expect, I still get upset about this when I think about what happened to my friends. And this was absolutely... Do you know, I used to say, on my watch. As if, as if a 12-year-old boy could have done anything in the face of this level of adult obscenity and I think institutional cover-up as, as if a 12 year old boy could have done anything but I still think I still feel guilt I, I still think we think we thought we knew we didn't know for sure one of them was using the photography dark room um, to abuse boys we thought those of us who weren't in his uh, who hadn't been targeted by him, we thought that they were just looking at pornography and and drinking cider and and uh, you know and and, and having a a naughty time of it. We did not know look that they were being abused, but we knew it was wrong, um, and we knew who it was. We knew where it happened. We had a fair idea which boys were involved, and and. I, I, and they couldn't talk to us about it because of the usual threats and what have you that had been deployed in that context. And, you know, the threats made to the, to the victims. Again, do use WhatsApp and texts responsibly today. Do let me know if I use words inappropriately. I'm, I'm 52 years old. I, I have talked about these matters now for 30 years at least. 25 years at least. God, I told you about when I got the phone call, didn't I? God, that was a moment. I was walking over Westminster Bridge. I don't know why. My dad wasn't long dead. So we're going back 12 years or so. My phone, I answer my phone. It's an, un, uh, an unrecognised number. And a, a, a woman introduces herself as being from... West Midlands Police, Kid- Kidderminster Police Station, in fact, where I had <laughs> a couple of uh, unpleasant experiences that we'll save for a different day. And I start, you know what you do, you, you, you happily, I, I didn't think, oh my God, what have I been caught doing, which I might have thought 10, 20 years previously. But I, I, I went through in my head what she might be ringing me about. And my first thought was that it was linked to my dad's death, because that was the biggest 
and that he'd, I don't know, he'd left his car in a multi-storey car. But do you know what I mean? Something utterly stupid and banal, but it must be linked to Dad because the only massive thing that's happened in my life recently is Dad dying. And therefore... And, and then she said, um, I'm, I'm phoning you about... I'm not going to say the name of the school because it's changed hands now. It's a completely different institution. It has the same name, but none of the same people are involved. So, so that wouldn't be fair. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm phoning you about so-and-so school you've probably been waiting for this phone call for years and I had to stop on the on the bridge and I thought and I thought god yeah and I said is it about Mr O'Brien bizarrely he had the same he had the same name as me just a quick word to the lawyers he, he's, he was sent to jail don't worry there's no danger here of um of defamation or, or even similar and i said is it about him and she said yes and and also another teacher and and she said a boy had come into the police station decades later just walked into the police station partly as a consequence of the uh, atmosphere that changed briefly with regard to child sexual abuse in this country in the aftermath of Jimmy Savile and other very, very high-profile famous offenders and the reporting, I think in part, some of the reporting that Andrew Norfolk did with regard to grooming gangs and girls not being believed when they came forward. And there was a brief window when victims were told they would be believed and that if they came forward, um, the uh, uh, wheels of justice would work in their favour and tragically, one of the main reasons why that window shut again was because one of the cases that became a sort of cause celebre for believing victims, for believing accusers, the accuser turned out not to be telling the truth. A, a, a man who was known as Nick when his accusations were being made and later turned out to be um, a paedophile himself called Carl Beach and the Operation Midland officers who described his allegations as credible and true um, uh, contributed to a, an, an opportunity for people to shut down that window. And, and you know, I, there are good reasons, I guess, for it. People who are falsely accused at a very high profile have unimaginable horrors to endure. But that moment was the kind of moment in which this boy could walk into a police station and think, you know what, I'm going to tell the truth about what happened to me 30 years ago because I... I think that it might actually achieve something. For the first time in my life, I think it might actually achieve something. And they went absolutely great guns. It was extraordinary. They contacted everybody. The first question she asked me, of course, was whether or not I had been abused. And, and at that moment, I thought, God, how would... How, I mean, imagine how those lads feel today. I just had to stop and, and lean against the... Um, uh, the, the 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 barrier on the side of the bridge. I, th I felt my my legs go a bit funny because this is something that we've all carried, but all I carried was knowledge and, and a little bit of Catholic guilt about the ludicrous notion that I, as a twelve year old, could have done could have done more. But adults are involved in all of these stories. Adults who were not abusers are involved in all of these stories. The first thing we say when we get together, and it's a pretty scant silver lining, and there are obviously places we don't go to and questions we don't ask each other, but we've, we've re-established contact partly through social media and, and, and latterly partly in person. Some of the boys went back for a visit to the school, which I couldn't make. It was your fault, actually. I can't, couldn't get the time off work. Um, and you... you the first thing we ask each other is, they must have known. Other teachers, other adults must have known. There was a teacher who left. He was really popular. And no one could understand why he left. And I look back and I think to myself, I think you knew. And I think you couldn't countenance staying. I don't know whether you had spoken to anybody senior, anybody in authority at the school and been unsatisfied with the response that you received. But you didn't go to the police. Nobody did. It was normal, if that's an appropriate word to use in this context. It was commonplace for people to know. And listen, if you're my age and you're struggling with this from a position of scepticism or cynicism, 
It's quite helpful to remember nicknames. Like boarding schools are hideous places when these kind of characters have found uh, a, a role within them, have found a home within them. But it's by, this wasn't a boarding school story, the Welby one, but it was residential. It was when they were on residential camps that it would happen. But the access to children can be through sport, of course, football stories, from a few, all those stories that came out in that little window of treating accusers as honest, believing their allegations before it was slammed shut again in the aftermath of Operation Midland. All of those scandals that, that were really gathering pace and almost all of which were not built on lies and false allegations, that they all spoke to access, quite often residential. Boys would stay over at the home of a football coach. And you, you, you look at what other adults knew and you know that they looked away. And the, the reason I mentioned cynicism and scepticism and nicknames is because all environments had nicknames. Every generation of children had a, a teacher who was known as, you know, Pervy Perkins or, 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 or Dodgy Dave. Every school, right? It, it's not every school. Ev everywhere where adults had access to children, there was someone who had a reputation, um, which was commonplace is a better word than normal. And, and I think it's 12-year-old me that wants to ask today's question. We, we, we will watch and wait to see what happens to Justin Welby, who I have met and by whom I was deeply impressed. I wasn't across the detail of this story when I met him. And full disclosure generally is not a, an interview environment in which we hold people's feet to the fire. But he, he, he was he's the first man in 20 years who's made, well, the first man since dad died 12 years ago, who's made me think deeply about God, actually, uh, for whatever that's worth. And, and I appreciate it won't be worth much to you, possibly. Hansi Harold, Dan says, everyone's got one. Everyone's got one. Um, I don't know why the adults don't do anything. I don't know why the grown-ups don't blow the whistle. I still don't. I didn't then and I don't now. Why don't the grown-ups do more in these situations? And I don't want I don't want a catalog of condemnation because I don't think that would be helpful. I think if a 12-year-old boy can carry a sense of guilt that he didn't do more, <laughs> what the hell does an adult carry? An adult who didn't do more. Why don't the grown-ups do more? I didn't come across... And the, the other story I had... Sorry, I know this is long, but it's quite important. The other story I had was of a completely different order and not in any way comparable, but it speaks to institutional protection. Um, when me and my mates got thrown out of that school where monks were routinely abusing children for the appalling crime of smoking cannabis, uh, the speed with which the school authorities sought to absolve themselves of any responsibility, to claim that we'd been exposed to bad influences outside the school, to claim that it had absolutely nothing to do with the school. Now, I was growing up on a farm in Worcestershire. There was no earthly way I could have accessed the kind of uh, 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 individuals that we accessed on our weekends over the wall in the city of York. But the school moved so quickly to tell all the other parents that, that we were the problem to impute that our parents had been negligent or lax, to, to wash their hands of all responsibility, even as they were complicit in the cover-up of epic child sex abuse. Incredible, right, when you think about it. But I still don't know. I, 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 can, I can see him now. There was one moment, I, and I can't tell you about this because it's already 22 minutes after 10, but there was one moment where I came perilously close to blowing the lid off the whole thing by accident, and, and I think of that moment, I thought of it a lot when these stories started breaking. Um, why don't the adults do anything? Is it the same reason I didn't? 03456060973 is the number you need. Why don't the adults do anything? Justin Welby told in 2013 about Smythe. He claims that prior to that he had no awareness or suspicion, but subsequent to that he did and he did nothing. Why don't they do anything?